I want to talk about something that actually matters to this country, and that is our ability to make, produce, grow business, uh, build things, export things. It's what keeps this country uh, running. And it has been difficult for those who run the businesses that keep the country running of late, because the Labor Party has taken a rather doctrinaire approach to immigration policies. In the interest of keeping wages up for workers and serving its union mates well, uh, those who believe basically in socialism and communism, the government has had a policy and a kind of undeclared policy, but an obvious policy of restricting the uh, incoming workers to New Zealand, of restricting um, migrant workers by making it difficult for them to get in. It has in some sectors where this policy has proved disastrous tried to ameliorate the negative effects of it. Uh, but back, back in May, the Prime Minister and then Immigration um, Minister Chris Farfoy announced a winding back of what were called partner work visas. And this means if you come to work in New Zealand, you can bring your partner, your spouse with you. Pretty reasonable thing. And often, I think, used in areas like, say, a Filipino worker coming to work here in, on a dairy farm, which they can do. You could bring your wife or indeed your husband uh, with you. I would hate to be um, uh, gender biased there. But now it appears this is being wound back, that spouses and partners are back on the agenda. So is this a admission by Labor that it got it wrong? And is it enough to cure the problem we have with a shortage of workers that cannot be met uh, domestically? We're joined now by National's Immigration Spokesperson, uh, Erica Stanford. Erica, have I correctly des described the history of what's happened here in terms of the partner visas? You have. You've done a great job. You barely need me at all. Um, <laughs> you're exactly right. They, they, did, they did. They took away, the, well, they planned to take away the open work rights of partners. Now, that, that word is important, open work rights. So when you come as a migrant, skilled migrant, you have a... You get an automatic uh, visa for your children to attend school and you get an automatic uh, open work visa for your partner. So they can work anywhere, any number of hours, any job, anywhere they like. They can shift employers. Uh, and it's really important because often you get a skilled migrant come in the country and potentially his or her wife uh, may not have a, a brilliant command of the English language or they haven't worked out of their side of their country before. Um, and you know they need the opportunity to A, connect with the community, be part of the community, get some English language skills um, and get some New Zealand work experience uh, while they're here. And also, you know, in the cost of living crisis we're in, you obviously need two people working these days, so one is, was never going to cut it. So what they replaced that with, with was, well, you can come on a, a visitor visa, so it's supposed to be from December, uh, or you can get a, a, an open, uh, sorry, a uh, employer accredited work visa in your own right, which is, you know, paid $30 an hour with an accredited employer, and that was putting a lot of workers off. Okay, so this is actually good. It doesn't just mean, I imagine, that the partnered worker, the primary, if you want, worker who wants to come and work in New Zealand is more likely to come if they can bring their spouse or family with them. Mm -hmm. By bringing their spouse or family with them, they also create another potential worker in New Zealand. Well, they absolutely do. And my question has always been, when we've got the the biggest labour force shortages in 50 years, and you've got Adrian Orr talking about the uh, critical labour shortages leading to him have to hike the OCR uh, so much. Why would we not want to bring more people in to um, increase our workforce? If you think about all of the jobs at the moment, and it's not just the high-skilled jobs and the very highly paid jobs that we're short, short of. Uh, in, in my electorate, we can't get security guards up in Auckland, and that used to be the students, a lot of the international students that did that. We can't get people to pack shelves. We can't get dishwashers in our restaurants. So there are skill shortages across the country, across the regions, and across uh, different skill levels. So why on earth we would uh, block off the supply uh, It's as big as belief. Yeah, well, so Michael Woods actually listened. He's done the right thing here. Yeah, sort of. Well... The problem is, is that he indi they indicated back in May that this was going to be the policy. And of course, the closer we got to December, the more and more uh, I think that, that uh, migrant workers would have been put off New Zealand because they thought, well, from December, my partner won't get work rights. And so we've only seen uh, 
if you look at the statistics for the 11th of October, which is the latest data I've got, only 2,500 people have arrived on a work visa since the category opened in July. So that's hardly any, given that usually yeah. about 55,000 arrive under all the old work visas. Right, right? So really? Not that many arrivals. Yeah. So, so that's it. So that's uh, so we've just got a tenth of people coming into work that we would yeah, normally like have. Yeah, I don't, I don't have the latest figures because Michael Wood doesn't like to give me back for my uh, written questions on time. However, even if you doubled or even tripled that figure, let's just let's be nice and say it's you know seven and a half thousand. Uh, normally, under, in 2019, under all work visa types for the year, we had about 55,000 arrivals. So we're nowhere near where we were. And and I put it to you that people are being put off for a number of reasons, uh, and, and there's a bit more thought if you've got some time. But yeah, yeah, well, tell the me. The main part is, well, if you think about it, they didn't open the AEWV uh, work visa until July. By the time they started uh, you know, actually inviting migrants to apply for their visas, you know, you're looking at September, October. Flights are more expensive, um, and, and they can't bring their partners, uh, and also flights are full. I mean, you can't get a flight from South Africa at the moment because they're all full. So we have wasted an opportunity this year to get workers in the country because we buggered around for so long. By the time the work visa opened, it was too late to get people here. And now the problem, what the minister's done, is kick this can down the road because he's not ditched this policy of not allowing uh, partners work rights open work rights. He's just delayed it till August. So he's sending the message to the world still. No, it's still going to happen. Uh, it's going to happen in April. So it's a mixed message to the world. It says to migrants, well, actually, you know, we're, we're pulling and throwing. There's no, keep shifting the goalposts. And I tell you what, they'll just go to Australia or Canada where there are much better opportunities for their partners to have work And rights. where they are actively seeking to attract immigrant workers. Oh, absolutely. They are aggressively targeting them. If you look at their, their uh, equivalent of our green list, they've got hundreds of jobs on the straight to residence pathway in Australia because they've just rolled out the red carpet. Only 10% of the people who've applied for a work visa so far under this new visa have been on the green list. That tells you that that green list uh, needs to be massively extended. But um, All right. Now, would you yeah. say that is the next, if you like, U-turn that the government should implement? And they've been doing this a bit lately. They did it with entrenchment, and it appears when they're kind of caught, they will do a U-turn on policy. What is the next U-turn you want from Michael Wood in terms of immigration settings? Nurses, straight to residents. Absolutely. That is the number one thing. Nobody in the whole country, apart from the government and Michael Wood, can tell me why nurses have to wait two years to residence so they can go straight to Australia and get it immediately. The numbers of nurses applying for visas to come to New Zealand has dropped off a cliff in, Oct in uh, the latest figures I've got uh, from October. 39 nurses in total. That's in total coming to do their competency course before they can get registered and nurses who are work ready can work straight away. 39. When the borders were closed, we were getting like 150 a month. The numbers have massively plummeted and that's because we are not competing with Australia. All right. When is uh, National coming out with its immigration policy prior to the election? Uh, well, if you have to remember over the last 18 months, I've probably released, I counted on my hand quickly yesterday, six, but there's probably more. I've released policy continuously, yep. um, some of which the government has picked up, which has been very nice. Um, we've, I've worked on policy. It's pretty mostly ready to go, but we just have to wait for the right time, of course. And also there's a few curveballs the government have thrown in as well. They're, they are looking at changing the skilled migrant category, which is the points to residence system. Yeah. And I'd like to quite, I'd quite like to see the outcome of the um, consultation they're doing on that before I uh, announce what our policy will be. So we're pretty close. You know, we we always yeah. follow a timeline in an election year, but we've already stated some things. Massively expand the green list, put uh, medical workers on the straight to residence pathway, get rid of the median wage requirement for, to pay uh, yeah. migrants, pay them the same you would pay a Kiwi. And there's a lot of things I've already indicated that will yeah. change, and yeah. you'd, you'd know from us that yeah, yeah. You know, we, we yeah. need to massively streamline I've got this, this process. I've got this text through too, and I, I don't know, you might know more about the context of it, it says, yeah. why don't you look at the migrants' family or families in Kapiti area that have set up successful businesses but have been denied their right to stay in New Zealand? Maybe if they stayed on the dole and took government handouts, they would be OK. Do you know what that case is or what that refers to? No, I'm not sure, but I know that there okay. are a lot of people in this country who are struggling to get their residence and stay here and they're being booted out at a time when... You know, you saw the, the, the Hungarian uh, family, yeah. that, uh, a couple of businesses, things like that. Just silly decisions where we're, we're telling people who are very successful they have to leave the country. And I, 
look, I don't know the, the details of all of the Do cases, you but, think but, but, this yeah, setting well, overall, let's look overall for a moment, do you think this is because of Labor's connection with unions and wanting to keep wages high and they would sacrifice the growth of an economy and keep people out in order to protect the closed shops that unions run and thrive on? 100%. That's exactly what they're doing. I mean, I, to start with, I thought it was just incompetence. Uh, and then I realised, no, actually, they are doing this on purpose. That's the reason that you see... Um, you know, the fact that they've, they've, they've screwed the numbers down, they've, they've implemented this median wage, we've got to pay a migrant uh, much more than you would pay a Kiwi, which is forcing everyone else up and uh, just adding to our inflationary pressures. We're in this wage price spiral. In fact, domestic, the drivers of domestic inflation are the highest they've ever been, and this is part of the problem. So in their uh, wish to, to, to uh, look after their union mates and, and, and drive up wages, they're actually driving up inflation. They are absolutely doing this on purpose. Erica, always good to talk to you. I thank you for your time this morning. Erica Stanford, uh, National's Immigration Spokesperson. And there you go, another U-turn from this government. And I actually think she, uh, Erica's put her finger on a really uh, big issue. And we have these inflationary pressures, but a lot of them are actually being driven by the government itself. The government itself. And I note that there is still some consideration that the relief you've got at the pump, the fuel subsidies and the reductions in road user charges and other things may be extended past... They cleverly put them on till the 31st of January so we wouldn't all be saying, woe is me, as we got in the car and went off for the summer hollies. But how would a, ju a government justify extending the fuel subsidies when you have a Reserve Bank governor who says it is time to tighten your belts and take the hit? I cannot figure that out. I cannot figure that out.